Good morning, campers. Fat Man Outdoors. We're all guilty of this, every single one of us. We've been getting ready for deer season or getting ready for some some sort of a hunt we're going to go on and something just wasn't exactly right and we tried to rush and fix it and maybe it worked maybe it didn't everybody makes mistakes uh, so that's what I'm going to call this video I'm going to entitle it mistakes were made this is why okay that sucker is in there okay that is an aluminum rod that is a um, I'm not sure this rod was the rod that originally came with the rifle. I don't think it was because I think this is solid aluminum. Uh, but it is stuck in there. And the reason it's stuck in there is because they were trying to get the old load that was in it out. And they didn't have a, a ramrod. So they tried to use a wooden dowel. And that would have worked. It was a good idea. One step was missed. On the wooden dowel, if they would have placed a thimble on the end of it to keep the dowel from it splaying out when you started driving it against the bullet would have been fine but they didn't do that uh, they didn't know how to do that so you know I mean it's a mistake was made and, and when they started driving the wooden dowel in the dowel splayed out and went to the outer edges woods just like water if it can find the path of least resistance when you're driving it into something it'll find it so it started going to the outside of the bullet got down on the side of the bullet and then then the dowel jammed everything up and then the dowel itself was stuck then when the dowel broke off uh in retaliation to try to get the wooden dowel out the, the 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 guy drove the aluminum rod in there and then of course the aluminum rod was harder than the dowel so then the the dowel went up inside the aluminum rod on the end of it and then it got stuck and couldn't go any further so now they've managed to get the bullet out they managed to get the the savvy out they managed to get all the powder out but now what we've got is we've got a wooden dowel stuck with an aluminum rod stuck down in it so what my goal is to do is i'm going to knock the, the aluminum rod out first and then i'm going to put a um, an endoscope down in the barrel and see where we're at with this wooden dowel see what things look like before i go any further i may be able to drive it out or what i may do is i may have to drill it and then drive it out so that once i drill a hole in the wooden dowel it'll give space for the dowel to compress back toward that hole when I start trying to drive it out and it'll make it slip out of there easier. Like I said, it's a mistake. Anybody can make it when you get in a hurry and you're trying to get something done and you got two days before deer season. This is the things that happens. You know, sometimes when you try to do that thing to try to cut the corner, uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Well, this is one of those times when it didn't. So uh, let's get to it and see if we can't get this uh, aluminum rod out. And then after we get the aluminum rod out, then we'll see what we can do about that wooden dial. As you can see right here, I've locked a pair of vice grips onto that metal, onto that aluminum rod. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tilt the camera down just a bit. Maybe so you can see what I'm going to do here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hammer and hit the bottom of these vice grips and see if I can't jar that rod up out of there. Things really, really stuck in there. <laughs> well, the aluminum rod came out. The thing was driven about that far down through that wood. Now, I was going to put an endoscope down in here. But I don't really think it's going to be an issue. I think that it, that piece of wood is going to probably drop out of there pretty easy. So uh, let me get a, a fiberglass rod here that I can put down in that. And uh, let's see if we can't get that knocked out. Okay, so now we've got the, the piece of metal that was in the barrel. This aluminum rod here. Uh, clamped on vice grips and used a hammer and, and hit the vice grips to knock it up out of there. I, 
it being an aluminum rod, the good thing about that is I don't think it's going to damage the uh, the bore any the way they beat on it. We'll have to check that when we do that. In order to do all that, we're going to need one of these. Guys, if you do much gunsmithing work, even if it's not gunsmithing, if it's just cleaning your own guns and you have some long guns that you can't really see into in some of the tight spaces, like semi-automatic, I've got a, a Remington 7400, you really can't see up in there too well without a, a, a light and being able to get really you your face right up in it. This is an endoscope. Ten bucks off Amazon. Very cheap. Plugs right into your phone. As you can see, plugs right into your phone. You can record, you can take pictures, it has a light, you can turn the light on and off. Uh, it's even, I think, got two or three different settings on the light, but we don't want to get into making a, a video about the endoscope. But what I wanted to use the endoscope for, the owner of the rifle said that they'd got the bullet out, the sabot out, and all of the powder out. Well, when I started to see about pushing the rod out, there was something about three or four inches down in the front of the barrel. I don't really think that's going to be the wooden dial. But we're going to find out. So now things just got interesting. Because I can't really see... It doesn't look like a wooden dial. And I'm not sure. If it's black powder, I don't want to go beating on it. That's for sure. That's for sure. I don't think it's the wooden dial, but I'm not. If it is, that wooden dial is just in splinters. So what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to try to. I'm going to put this fiberglass rod down in this end. And gently peck and see what happens and, and hope that nothing bad happens because uh, there's some different weird colorations I'm seeing down in there and I don't know I'm just I'm not certain but that's pretty interesting okay we'll take the endoscope back out now I have a fiberglass rod here okay that's how much wood came out after I got the aluminum rod out. Uh, there was about 12 or 14 inches of wood in there and the bad thing about it is there's wooden dowels drove in both ways through the barrel. So they climbed on top of each other and created more force than than could be dealt with by pulling them. So I had to take a small drill bit and drill holes uh, to get and, and get a, a drill bit extension and drill holes very slowly and very carefully so that I did not damage the rifling of the barrel. I'll show you a, uh, a run through of my endoscope through the rifling right after I got the, the wood out. It's still real dirty. I got a lot to clean. There's still some shards of wood that's hung up in the rifling and stuff. Gonna have to get all those out. But I, that's not a big issue. But uh, there's what come out of it. That's a medium sized pair of vice grips. That's my hand compared to the pile of wood. And I got a great big hand. There's a whole lot of wood there. And it looks like that was probably a half inch dowel rod. And it was drove in from both ways so that when they separated, they climbed over each other. A lot of work. Could have been avoided. But everybody makes mistakes. Nobody's to blame. All right, y'all, I've got all of the wood, as you've seen in the pile, and the big aluminum rod, that's all out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a few drops of CLP down this barrel, and I'm gonna take an oversized wire brush. 
that's made to fit a 20 gauge shotgun and I'm going to brush the barrel to get all of the slivers of wood and the splinters and, and stuff that's been pressed into the rifling. I'm going to work all that out of there. Now CLP will cause the wood to swell and push itself up so that it'll be easier for me to get it out. I really like CLP. This stuff is awesome, man. And it don't take but a little bit to go where you want to go. Just a couple of drops here and there. One of the better all around just protectants for a gun that I've ever used. And I've used pretty much everything that's... Oh yeah, you can feel that. Boy, it's tight. <laughs> There's a lot of wood fell out the end of the barrel right then. But I'm going to do this for a minute, and then I'll be back, and uh, we'll get her uh, dry cloth run through it, and then we'll take the end of the scope and see if we need to go any further. If the rifle's shot in it, I don't know, because I wasn't the one involved with most of the stuff that was done to it, trying to get the wood out of it, and the bullet out of it, and all that stuff. So, there's a lot of rust coming out. We'll just have to take a look at it and see, but uh, I'll be back as soon as I get this all brushed out real good for a few minutes, and we'll take a look at it. Well, y'all, we got everything out of the barrel, we cleaned the barrel. The barrel does have some scarring in it, a little few scratches here and there. Nothing super major from the abuse it took with the rod being drove down in there and stuff. Um, actually shot well. It's still shooting pretty good. Shot about an inch high at 50 yards right on, right on the money. Uh, I don't know how far out I would want to shoot it with those scars in the barrel. I'd probably keep my um, my range under 100 yards with it, but I think inside of 100 yards it'd still be just fine. Uh, shot well for me. Uh, I, this was a rough, rough job. A rough job. I'm going to get one more last picture of everything put together with a ruler beside it to show you just how much stuff come out of that barrel. This thing has got a 21-inch barrel on it. I, I think is what it is, or maybe it's 22, and probably 18 inches, 17, 18 inches, w was wedged in there. Was either a uh, aluminum rod that had been drove in with a hammer, or, or two pieces of dowel rod that had been drove in, looked like with a hammer, and, and uh, they climbed over each other when they went in. And when they did, I don't know if you've ever dealt with wood very much, but if you ever worked on wooden boats and stuff. If you cut wood at, a, at a, a wedge shape and you drive them over the top of each other where they, they lay on one on top of the other, oh my God, it's amazing how much pressure you can generate by driving those two pieces of wood together. And I had to overcome all that. I had to find a way to get that all loosened up. Uh, spent about three hours getting everything out of the barrel. I was just getting stuff out of the barrel. And then once I got everything out of the barrel, cleaning it up wasn't too bad. And like I said, luckily... Uh, there's not too much scarring on the rifling and, and I was really pleased that the threads for the breech plug were good You can still run the the breech plug in and out with your fingers. So that was a, a blessing right there But uh, we've got her all back together And she's ready to go back in the field and uh, Today's Thursday. So one more day is all they got and then they got to go take her in the woods and get some venison uh, I'm hoping that happens. I uh, wish them all the best of luck He's a good friend of mine, and it's his son's gun, and his son's going to hunt with it, and I believe he'll be all right. They bought him a new push rod and a bullet starter, and I let him know that it's okay to, to lubricate those sabots to put them down in there, and that'll help you a whole lot. Just make sure that, uh, that you don't put too much, just a little bit, rub it on there, and then after you drop your powder in, then go ahead and put it in. You'll be just fine. 
Well, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I didn't really show you a whole lot of the stuff that I was doing to get the wood out because I don't want to show you stuff that you might try at home with and, and make a mistake and, and ruin the inside of your gun. Take your gun to a gunsmith or take your gun to somebody that knows what they're doing and, and can fix your gun for you without messing it up. This All this was, it was a mistake. You know, they happen. Anybody could do it. You know, you get in a hurry, and, and, and I know this guy, he works like a dog. He don't got much time to do stuff, and, and he was just trying to solve a problem as fast as possible. And unfortunately, it's one of them deals where the problem compounded the more he tried. And, and so but we got him fixed up now. He's ready to rock and roll, ready to put some meat in the freezer, and hopefully Saturday morning, that's what they'll do. Y'all, this is a fat man. I'll see you out there somewhere. I'm gone.